Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about modernizing the monolithic architecture to container-based architecture. Good morning, afternoon or evening depend on the location you all are joining. Unfortunately, I can't present this session in real time. That's why I am pre-recording this session. Please contact me via Twitter or LinkedIn for any feedback or questions. About me, uh, about myself, Vinay Kumar, I'm an Oracle age from 2014 and I'm based in Netherlands. I'm working in an insurance company called Atradius. I'm working uh, as main architect on application and the integration architect. I'm frequent blogger and on Fusion, Oracle Fusion middleware, cloud and open source technologies. I have also authored a book on Oracle Web Center portal. And uh, yeah, and you can connect me via Twitter or LinkedIn. Oracle Ace. As part of the Oracle Ace program, I would like to add few details of Ace program. It has three tiers, uh, Oracle Ace Associate, Oracle Ace and Oracle Ace Director. You can be also one of them. So if you want to know about that, please go, go, go to the respective link and find the information. This is the agenda of this talk. I would be talking about from what is monolithic application and why we should modernize the architecture. What are the core principles and the patterns? How can we modernize a monolithic app to microservices based architecture? And I'm also going to talk about some of the core principles and the pattern of microservices, how we can uh, slice down or decompose the micro monolithic application into microservices or container based architecture. And then we will also talk about the high level modern architecture uh, looks in containers. Monolithic. A monolithic application is a self-contained application and independent from computing application. The design philosophy that the application is responsible not just for a particular task, but can also perform every step needed to complete a particular function. So it's a single block which contain all the dependencies and which package into one single unit, which you might can deploy in any server. For example, if you if you look uh, if you look at right now in a monolithic application, you typically have a client, business logic, data access layer, and the database. And if you try to compare with Oracle Fusion middleware, where we do have everything is running in web logic, we do have for the UI ADF in Web Center portal, we have Oracle SOA suite, we build the data access layer via OSP data services, and then we do have a database. So typically a monolithic, monolithic application might be a single fat Java war file or which contain a single directory hierarchy of Rails, Node.js or Java code. In a traditional server side application, uh, it contains all the business logic into a single unit. And if, if we say the example of ADF or uh, our Fusion middleware, everything is continued deployed in web logic where we build the data services, business processes, orchestration, and also the UI as well as part of the web logic. Now it's time to modernize the architecture. Let's look at uh, main bits in traditional server-side application architecture. So when we say traditional server-side application, I think most of you are already familiar of this where we do have some sort of a backend. We have the front-end where which is the mainly the presentation layer and we do have a client side which can be a browser so in a traditional server side application we 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 have from the client side where the user makes that input and the request and these requests are then sent to the server side where these are treated accordingly after the presentation layer we make a request to the back end where the logic is present and where we can send the request made to the database back end and back to the front end layer. This is a monolithic application, you say, because it contains all the logic into a single file in a way that is only accesses a single database. You can still uh, access to multiple database, but still because all the logic present into a single unit, that would be still be called as a monolithic application. A monolithic per se may not be bad at all. Is a monolithic application is still bad? We have been uh, building or uh, designing or developing the monolithic application for the last couple of years. It's not bad. I mean, sometimes it still makes sense. So I think because it also contains a lot of uh, benefits if you if you are a small team, 
if you really if you don't have the skill set new skill set to develop a microservices based architecture and if you don't have the requirement of scalability and and uh, automation is not there then i think it, it would still make to go for the monolithic based architecture but it has some drawback as well it has no modularity it is slow response to errors it's uh, i mean time to deliver is much more higher when we say that now if if we look at the example i mean we already mentioned some of the benefits of monolithic creation on the contrary we do have a lot of drawback as well the simple approach has a limitation is in size and the complexity application is too large and complex to fully understand and make changes fast and correctly the size of the application can slow down the startup time we have to re redeploy the entire application on each update and that might be a biggest problem with monolithic application the changes even the small changes are too slow to come to the production some monolithic application can be difficult to change this may be due to the technology challenges or maybe due to the reg regulatory constraints Com some components in use today may have come for different different funk suppliers making change difficult or impossible it can be both consuming and costly for the organization to go through a complete audit process often organization continue to invest investing in old replication much longer than appropriate in the belief that they are saving the money it is possible to evaluate what is in monolithic replication does to learn if some individual functions can be separated and run as a smaller independent services this can be implemented either a cloud based services or a container based microservices rather than waiting attempting to address older technologies as a whole it may be wise to undertake a series of incremental change to make enhancing or replacing the established system more acceptable although microservices bring many benefits for large projects that have lot of developers working on them smaller projects are usually built with monolithics monolithics are normally typically cheaper to develop and launch because they consist of single code base and that is why transition to microservices should be well planned and decision based on the needs and the power of the company companies that are growing should seriously consider microservices as an architecture the most common reason teams migrate to microservices are the scalability and the productivity challenges the project that are growing require more developers so allow allowing them to focus on a single service on the application make things much easier and productive if they are working with a monolithic architecture they all have access to the same code base in this case the smallest change can disrupt the communication between the teams and the change the entire application microservices eliminate all these issues they allow intermediate releases as ci cd pipelines are e easily integrated deployment can happen 1000 times in a day at the same time the application is running as usual as it consists of many different small components microservices what exactly the microservices are microservices is a software development technique that arranges an application as a collection of loosely coupled services the primary motivation of microservices uh, in, in nowadays is that software is eating the world every company needs to be become a technology every company wants to become a technology company software is essential to their products and to their services and combined with the fact that market marketplace with within the companies operate are become becoming much more volatile and uncertain you know new competitors emerge out of nowhere and what that actually means is business need to in innovate as much faster as needed uh it i mean is and that's that's a key because now a lot of competition a lot of innovation companies are coming to the market and giving a competition to the traditional companies and that's why companies need to innovate and time to deliver time to market should be much faster than the monolithic much lesser than what we have in monolithic application let's if we talk about the benefits of microservices i mean i think we we do have we do have a big list here the scalability is one of the main advantage of the microservices based architecture each microservices can scale independently without affecting other microservices thus it definitely serves an advantage over monolithic application where in a lot of resources are wasted for scaling unrequired services since they all are packed together into one single deployable unit 
availability is another advantage fault tolerance even if one microservices has some fault with regard to say database connection pool getting exhausted thus there is a very clear clear boundary defined with regards to any other fault and unlike monolithic way other services operate still smoothly and only a small part of the application is impacted instead of the entire application bogging down Agility, we really get uh, much time to develop. The productivity is really increased with the microservices. We do have cloud agnostic. We have better maintainability. We have faster development, faster deployment, and we also have a clear separation of business concern. Each microservices cater to unique business functionality, and thus there is a very clear separation of business concern between each one of them, and then thus each microservices can be built in a very robust way but uh, it still comes with some pr uh, prices so architecture become much more complicated you really need to have a right skill set much more difficult to make a general changes and maybe some additional components also might need to be introduced in, in the organization Uh, this is a clear uh, deception or the difference between the microservices and the monolithic architecture as you can see each microservices is independent to each other and contain their own database it is isolated deployment unit and development unit which act as a single atomic unit on the contrary we can see the micro monolithic architecture where we do have a user interface data access layer and the business logic still consists into a say one one big file where we stand or where you stand i i think this is a typical good question i mean where your organization is really standing standing right now and i'm sure when you look at this diagram uh, you can really really identify where your organization is really standing are you still working in into the monolithic app are you still using a soa based architecture which is, might be using esp are you already introduced the api management gateway are you still defining different boundaries or you start working on the uh, domain driven design or you are still on the uh, microservices based architecture and here i mean if you if you see here it, it also defines how the technology is really mapped to the different process and the people and so on are you still a centralized team are we still have a central of excellence in your organization have we developed different api teams which enables to develop apis quite faster and so on so i think it's a good example where you really need to map your people process and technologies and your digital alignment how it's look like now if you look at the closer look of the microservice architecture where we said we have a independent unit where each service have deployed into a single container and those containers so one container can be used in java other container can be used in python and i, I can also use a go language and they are talking to different separate databases and these containers now because once we have a separate container we also require to do a separate orchestration management for the containers and there might be we can use open shift kubernetes and so other products like that we also need to have an api gateway which might be abstraction layer on top of your intuition um, or middleware area and then you can connect to the different clients or you can have omni channel experience we will also uh, go in more much more detail when in the next slide about how the microservices architecture or the container based architecture look like Is the change really worth it? I mean, I'm I'm happy with my monolithic application. Why should I change? I mean, why should I bear all the pain? Why should I learn a lot of things? Is it really worth? I mean, if 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 we follow the typical uh, or the companies or the enterprise that have made the move towards the adoption of the microservices based application architecture, have commented or have mentioned that their IT costs are often reduced. They also often point out that once their team mastered the, their approach, once they have the right skill set, it was far easier and quicker to add new features and functions when market demand change, which is quite difficult and challenging with the monolithic based architecture. 
Everything comes with a price and nothing is free and microservices architecture can be much more complex and there are some architecture patterns you would be required to implement microservices or the container based architecture. Some of important patterns uh, are service discovery, messaging, circuit breaker, event driven architecture, API gateway, container orchestration, logging, health check APIs and, and so much I mean which you can see here. I think this is, I mean, if you are in, into a journey of microservices, I think this is a good place where you can check what capabilities you have or what capabilities uh, you might require to implement a microservices space architecture. It's a good picture. I mean, where some of, I think the important here is uh, when you implement a microservices based architecture, you really need to divide your monolithic application into different modules. And that's why you really need to decompose by the, the business capabilities and so on. And I'm not sure how many capabilities you have right now, but it's a good place to start where you can really check out your capabilities to implement microservices based architecture. Each microservices, uh, I mean, when we try to implement a microservice architecture, we really need to follow some of the core principles. And they are some of the core principles for the microservices based architecture, like single responsibility. Each microservices must cover and be responsible for a specific feature or functionality or an aggregation of cohesive functionality, which might be a single boundary context, encapsulating a functional domain. Domain driven design. Microservices are organized and built around encapsulated business capabilities. A business capability represents what, what a business does in a particular domain to fulfill its objective and the responsibilities. Incorporating domain driven design allows the architecture to isolate system ability into various domains. Designing around real world domain translate to software that represent the real world problem you are trying to solve. Black box, everything or encapsulation, everything should be black box. You should really need to access via the APIs. Service discovery, it's an important pattern or the principle service should never be exposed directly to a consumer. Service consumer should never be made to aware or dependent on the exact address of the services. They should instead use some form of indirection when locating or invoking the services. Decentralization uh, microservices embrace loosely coupled resources to achieve the autonomy and organization should strive to push power out the center organize and architecture. Each service, each service handling its own responsibility should be favored over having a single orchestrator that hold all the business logic in one place. Within a microservices environment, there should be no resource centralization independent deployable microservices should be independent deployable as a component this principle enables a change in one service to be deployed without requiring any other services to be deployed culture of automation uh, we really need to strive everything 100 percent automation standardized api mechanism with a published contract a service interface should be a well-defined, standardized, and widely adopted mechanism that is a published and available to consumers. We, we can follow an, an API first approach where we define the API definition be, before we start implementing it so that we can also pass through this to the consumer of those APIs and get the feedback quite early. This API is consistent across other microservices. To increase reuse, avoid breakage, using a standardized and widely adopted interface mechanism allow the service to be more easily, sorry, uh, more easily consumed, and they should be, uh, they should be because once we we pass through our API definition to our consumers, it can be easily consumed and easily to understand. Highly observable in microservices environment, high CPU usage on one container or instance does not necessarily imply an error. So informed system health decisions are based on an aggregated data. A service should be easily monitored and proactively alert in the event of detectable risk. Service should also be developed with a observability and monitoring in mind. Resilience and failure isolation we need to design for the failures and we also need to implement the appropriate security in place. Now 
we have a, a big monolithic application and we said we are ready for the microservices architecture how we can do it should we just simply divide our monolithic application into different services but how who define the boundaries how we can do it should we do the full rewrite the big bang rewrite guarantee is only a big bang so the equation is how do we get from our monolithic to the microservices architecture so this is a form of application modernization and one best practices that sort of evolved over the years is never 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 do a big bang rewrite that's why where you decide whether we are going to start from the scratch or completely re-implemented system that not usually does not go well so either you can really start on i mean you can really start from in, in a green field rather than you start rewriting everything and the best way is incremental let's follow the incremental approach do not jump uh, directly to a car then you might not able to drive it so you want to adopt in an incremental approach and then the pattern which you, you normally use is called as a strangler application pattern which is this where you sl you slightly slice down your monolithic application into small modules and you will add an additional abstraction layer and whatever the new application you want to build you build in a new 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 application architecture the microservices based architecture to enable the trunk based development we need to renew the architecture basis of our existing application fundamentally fundamentally we have two ways we can do it either build a new version of the application or swap one from the other or change the structure on the fly the latter, the latter is what is called a stronger application approach. It reduces the risk associated with the transforming application and allows to continue developing a new functionality in parallel with the transformation itself. In this approach, existing functionality updated slowly. New functionality should be developed in APIs. Build an abstraction layer and have a state of coexistence of modern and monolithic architecture. And one moment of time, we can we can transform the whole architecture. This would be, a, I mean, and at the time of the coexistence between the monolithic and the microservices, it might be required where we really need to coexist or the synchronize the database state, and that might be quite complex as well. And both new microservices and, and the monolithic need to work it together. But at one moment of time, if you follow this approach, we will have a say, independent small units which can be really act as a microservices. Let's go into more detail now about the strangler pattern. There are four ways to do it. Build an abstraction layer. The first thing you need to do is build an abstraction layer. You expose the number of APIs through which you access the functionality available within the monolithic application. Choose the type of the API you expose to carefully as they are APIs you will continue to expose when your application is transformed. Use a web service approach. These APIs become the way to invoke the functionality available in your application digitally. Doing this is really important. You may want to freeze the development of an application for a month or two till you have a clear definition of the abstraction layer. Involve your enterprise architects, talk to either your product owners to get over with the business. You may want to put an API management or the API gateway layer and even create APIs that access the monolithic database directly. Now you are ready to start your transformation. Stop digging the grave and you should stop any development on the monolithic. And then the functionality is available and no longer change. Make sure that is called through via the APIs. Rewrite replace the existing features. And, uh, and then slowly we can rewrite and or replace our existing feature. This is actually where our trans your transformation process really start. You will crave out the functionality needing change, copy the code and transform into the component or the microservices. In that, in that process, you will implement the new requirement of the business, but you will go somewhat further by extracting it from the monolithic. This may imply you have to change some code within the monolithic to redirect the call to the portion of the functionality here again, the way you design your abstraction layer is the first place may make this effort more or less easy. See whether you can keep consistency between the old way specific functionality was called and the API you define for the future. By doing this, you have reduced the monolithic somewhat. And over the time, you may replace part by your own developed components or eventually by a commercial of the shell functionality that doesn't matter. The objective is to use external triggers, business regulatory or the actual box to extract and the transform piece of the functionality one at the time. 
and the last one is the remove the least cycles. By transforming your operation into a series of loosely coupled functional modules, not only do you enable them to scale up and scale down to address varying needs, but you also enable the release of individual modules, making the traditional lease process obsolete. What if you are no longer need to plan lease for the weeks or months? Have a team working around the clock over the weekend to install the new version and maintain staff on standby the rollback if required. As a functional mod module, are loosely coupled you can just replace one module in the series and if you make your module error proof and capable of handling in the absence of surrounding functionality you have the opportunity to bring the functionality online in a matter of time in a stronger application pattern we we do have three ways transform create a parallel new application which might be running in the in any cloud environment or might, can be run in on premises you have to coexist with old monolithic as well as the new architecture application and then slowly eliminate remove the old functionality from your existing application or simply stop maintaining it as traffic is redirected away from the portion of the old site and that's the best way you transform you coexist and then you start el eliminating the existing functionality and when we say we try to eliminate or when we try to reroute we can simply use this feature where uh, in which we in this technique where we basically intercepting the call to the monolithic which are being implemented by some modules inside that monolithic and then redirection them to our implementation of that module as a standalone service and you are just sort of doing this one module at a time until you migrated the next necessary functionality auto into the server and every time every time you move the functionality into the service you are sort of moving a development from the slow monolithic lane into the high speed devops continue, continuous delivery continuous deployment lane that you are using for your services so little by little the pace of software delivery increasing so that the, that's the journal approach it turn out to be extremely good Uh, common terms in, in a domain driven design we have talked about the domain driven design and there are some other terms which is quite oftenly used and domain driven design is a key and in our opinion a necessary tool when designing a microservices be it breaking a monolithic or implementing a greenfield project it's really important and we should use it boundary context define the tangible boundaries of applicability of some subdomain it is an area where create some domain makes sense why others don't domains normally represent what an organization does subdomains might be a good candidate where it decompose uh, domains into the subdomains to ease their modeling and the comprehension bounding context it is a central pattern in a domain driven design it is really on the focus of domain driven design a strategic approach which is all about dealing with the large models and you can really map those uh, uh, models into the entities and you can come out with the dependencies and the definition now if you try to i mean slice or decompose our monolithic into the microservices architecture we really need to identify the boundary context in your application design a boundary context is a shared conceptual framework that constrains the meaning of number of entities so in in other words it defines some sort of a boundaries which terms or which work as a single unit of task or set group of task which is quite cohesive for example if uh, we have in a uh, air, airline application we have we might be a flight booking would be a one boundary context and loyalty program would be another boundary context but i'm sure when uh, we book if when we do a flight reservation it will also add or some mess message would be passed through to the loyalty program as well and that's why it be something called always an aggregate find out the boundary context that is smallest i mean you really need to find out the smallest boundary context and the least costly to the refactor which is easy to refactor and then conceptually plan out the microservices within the context plan out a rough url structure or the resource and define the overall responsibility of your microservices by try to map those with entities aggregate and the service pattern and in that way somehow you will start try to do the mapping between uh, for your in into your domain driven design 
and and the next step is really to understand the relationship between uh, for example you have in monolithic application you have a user interface and in those user interface you have a ui or the uh, a page or a screen you, we need to understand those dependencies or all the logic map to that page and then we really need to map come up with a mapping file follow the principle of the least surprise to the related aspect to the model manipulation try making some simple assumption that applies to this principle for instance if you have flows that queries a particular domain aspect you can assume that is likely this domain aspect should be updated even if you don't have a flow for that size your chunk define uh, the right size for a chunk and again you need to come up with the uh, dependencies and uh, try to map with the entities and the aggregate and the service pattern what really is an aggregate i will discuss in the next slide and then the last one is decide whether to develop an entire chunk at a time or each chunk as a series of services and that's a key decision you need to take when you're defining your microservices architecture now let's take the example of a traditional banking or financial system where we do have these many objects where we have customer accounts credit cards statement transactions and so on and if if this is a journal uh, uh, i think any product owner or the financial or the banking expert will tell you these are the journal terms but if you are the developer or the architect where you need to define or come out the right candidate for the boundary context that might be challenging and i think there you really need a functional domain knowledge if you try to group these uh, candidates into one and then you might able to come up with the right candidates for the boundary context and where we have identified customer card account and credit as the right boundary context objects here we have card customer account and the credit are we good i mean or can we say that card can be one micro services or customer can be one micro services and we are good to go maybe not we still need to decompose further into uh, more to understand uh, the right micro services or the right boundaries of micro services if we say i mean if we say we we try to find uh, the domain uh, now now let's go into the domain so customer can be one domain and accounts can be another domain and now we have to find the right subdomain and rating contact history settings might be a good example of of subdomains on the other hand uh, in in terms of accounts statement transaction or debit booking this might be a good candidates for contacts aggregate or or the entities that's uh, we really need to do the right mapping because customer might also able to interact with the account and there we might require a support subdomain or the contacts by which they will interact or they will pass the information is boundary context is equal to a micro services can we say that maybe not a micro services is boundary context but not the vice versa so every micro services should be part of a boundary context but every boundary context is not a uh, is not a micro services subdomain can be further decomposed aligning boundary context with the, with business subdomain is another popular approach for decomposing system into the micro services however even subdomains can be decomposed further hence aligning boundary context with business subdomain is not a recipe for decomposing a system into micro services either might be or might be not as we said a boundary context contains micro services one or two micro services or more than micro services now we we define the um, uh, boundary contexts or we define some sort of a approach but how these different boundary contexts will interact or they will pass the information to each other we have something called domains and each and the events and each domain interacts to each other by events and pop sub is a mechanism to talk by the events event streaming is a good example find out the right information to pass an event across the common boundaries which normally called as context in domain driven design domain events are described something that happen in the domain 
and is important to domain expert such eventually typically occurs such events typically occurs regardless of whether or to what extent domain is implemented in a software system they are also independent of technologies accordingly domain events have high value semantics which is expressed in the language spoken by the domain experts example can be a customer has registered a order has registered an order has been received and so on this this might be a good example of the event in this scenario or in in the example of our financial system we can easily say uh, when a new customer is created it need to it need to create a new account for that customer and and respectively we also need to generate the customer rating that need to be evaluated or validated now we we do have a big monolithic application uh, the same example which is running into a virtual machine and for the four same example where we have customer card accounts and the credit all are part of one application and is deployed as a single war file in some server if you, we want to make a some change in the customer module we need to deploy the whole war file and and that is really slow and and making a small change can be really difficult and uh, time to market is much high now how how we can move uh, the approach which we have discussed how we can try to implement here now we try to slice uh, our functionality into the services and then we try to expose as an apis so we we try to follow the here the incremental approach we build each functionality as part of the service and now transform the top layer to the apis and here we might also want to introduce the api gateway or the api management layer and this is also a good example if we talk about in our oracle fusion model where where our most of the customers or most of the organization still using oracle fusion model where on premises they have osp and we can still use api gateway on top of that we still can develop the services and then we can transform those services into rest or as an api into osp and then expose and into the api gateway uh it's a good way to divide the monolithic into the boundary context so on the design side we really need to find out the right boundaries domain subdomains and build as a service now we we try to map uh, uh, into this high level container based architecture how so this is exactly the high level architecture of container based architecture uh so next thing what we can do here to use these services into apis or we now we say these are the new apis and we deploy into the separate containers and each container manages their own services or the apis we require in container management platform which which will do the orchestration between those containers and event management would be also required here to follow the event driven architecture so each domain or the each container uh, or we will follow the event driven architecture and that's why we require an event management platform which might be work as a pub sub mechanism and all these uh, domains will expose their apis to the api management layer and that's how we can talk or how we can come up the best way to modernize our monolithic application plan to slice the monolithic i mean this is the process of a container based microservices reconstruction so there are multiple few steps mentioned here to plan uh, plan or decompose your monolithic application we really first step is to anal analyze the monolithic design data we really need to classify into the three tiers and then map each data one by one by the class type and one of the artifact which might be delivered here a class layer ma mapping table where we can really map the entities and, and the data the next one is uh, to define the right boundaries here find out the candidates of the boundary context domain subdomain and the microservices under the class relationship and the dependencies once you find out we also need to understand the persistent strategy because in microservices architecture we have eventual consistency and i think that's something to be discussed with the product owners uh state the microservices and uh, and then map to respective entities and also to find out the support context which goes across the boundaries of the microservices the third step is to implement the microservices uh, into the by three tiers 
and follow the microservices to have a right uh, connection. The last part is uh, to deploy your microservices where we collect all the artifacts to deploy our state. We can also come up with a generic template script for the container to have the right automation script. And then we can deploy our container based microservices and we will have a our future which is container slash microservices and which is highly scalable scalable and uh, a modern architecture then which is where the development efforts are much less and making a change it would be much more faster so summary uh monolithic is not always bad think your use case and if you find the right use case to modernize maybe this is the time to do it never rewrite your whole monolithic application in, into a big um, uh, microservices rewrite it will be a big bang always follow the incremental approach make the split right make the right boundary context uh, decompose the boundary context subdomains and the context one boundary context is not a microservices have an independent deployable unit as a containers and api and container management platforms and maybe even management platform event hub is also required to do the event development architecture having said that uh, feel free to give me any feedbacks uh, questions or any doubts uh, you can connect me via twitter and the linkedin thank you very much for listening to me thank you very much